In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. O God, you have instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that through the same Holy Spirit may always be truly wise and rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our spiritual reading tonight will be taken from The Secret of the Rosary by Saint Louis de Montfort. The Origin since the Holy Rosary is composed principally and in substance of the prayer of Christ and the angelic salutation in St. Luke chapter 1, verse 28 to 38, that is, the Our Father and the Hail Mary, it was without doubt the first prayer and the first devotion of the faithful and has been in use all through the centuries from the time of the apostles and disciples down to the present. So here uh, we uh, listen to what Blessed Alan de la Roque said of Dominic's Saint Dominic. Saint Dominic, seeing that the gravity of the people's sins was hindering the conversion of the Albin Gentian, withdrew into the forest near Toulouse, where he prayed and fast for three days and three nights. During this time, he did nothing but weep and do harsh penances in order to appease the anger of Almighty God. And that's also the reason why we are also praying for 40 days with fasting, for 40 days and 40 nights to beg God for mercy to lift this COVID-19 pandemic the same way that the Ninevites for 40 days and 40 nights, from the king down to all the priests and the lay people, even the animals, they fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, begging God's mercy. So it's the same with uh, Saint Dominic. He doesn't even know anymore where to get his uh, strength and what weapon to use in order to fight the sinners, especially the heresy during those times, which is the Albingentian heresy that started in France. So Saint Dominic went to the mountain to pray and to fast only for three days and three nights on bread and water. While uh, he was there, finally, our Lady appeared to him, accompanied by three angels, and said, Dear Dominic, do you know which weapon the Holy Trinity wants to use to reform the world where you live in now? Saint Dominic de Guzman said, Oh, my Lady, you know far better than I because next to your son, Jesus Christ, he had always been the chief instrument of our salvation. Then Our Lady replied, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. 
Therefore, if you want to reach the hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my Psalter. The Psalter that the Blessed Mother is talking about is the Holy Rosary. Remember in the Psalms of uh, King David, there are 150 Psalms. So the, the beads that we use is also 150, which we call the Rosary. But the Jews, they use also the beads. But in every bead, they recite the Psalms, the 150 Psalms. Now, the Blessed Mother said, instead of using the Psalms, use the angelic salutation. What is the angelic salutation? In St. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And then St. Elizabeth's response, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. So instead of 150 uh, Psalters, this short scriptural angelic salutation and the song of St. Elizabeth when uh, she met the Blessed Mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Originally, this was the only prayer that was given by the Virgin Mary to St. Dominic. We sometimes attribute this as the scriptural rosary. But you have to repeat it 150 times, and you must have faith, because, you know, prayer without faith will never be heard by, by God, even through the intercession of the Blessed Mother. So, here, St. Dominic received the answer. You want to change the word? You want to convert the hardened sinners? Start praying the rosary. So the Blessed Mother said, you gather the people to the cathedral, and there I will help you gather all the people. So what happened was, God wished by means of a supernatural phenomenon to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and make it known to all. So a storm came and it was so strong. The earth shook, the sun was darkened, and there was much thunder and lightning that all were very much afraid. Even greater was their fear when looking at the picture of Our Lady exposed in a prominent place. They saw her raised her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon them. If they fail to be converted, to amend their lives and seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. So what happened in that cathedral? Saint Dominic prayed and he prayed the rosary. He prayed the 150 scriptural rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. There was no Holy Mary. The Holy Mary was added by Pius the, the fifth during the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, when the whole of uh, Europe was in danger of falling into the Muslim, to Islamism. The last outpost of Catholicism was Vienna. But Pius V ordered one of Austria to gather all the people and pray the rosary. But instead of just saying the scriptural rosary, insert at the end, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
And so they prayed. And we all know the story. In the Battle of Lepanto, there were 300 warships of the Muslim with only 100 warships of the Christians. And during the battle, Juan of Austria, before uh, engaging in the battle, was ordered by Pius V to stage a rosary rally in the city. And then afterwards, uh, ask all the soldiers to go to confession, go to mass, receive communion, and then fight the battle. When they did that, they prayed the rosary while they were there fighting the battle. We know the, outs the outcome of this battle. The Muslims were totally routed. And the Muslims were even saying, there was a lady, the lady who protected you, the lady, the lady. She's the terrible as a battle, as an army uh, in battle array, which is Joel chapter two, verse 14. And so we realize how powerful is this rosary. So also with uh, Saint Dominic Guzman, we have this similar story, but this was earlier, 1214. So what happened to the to the storm, to the terrible uh, earthquake that shook the cathedral. The storm came to an end. As Saint Dominic prayed the rosary. So fervently and compellingly did he explain the importance and value of the Holy, Holy Rosary that almost all the people of Toulouse embrace it and renounce their false belief of the Albin Gentian. In that very short time, the great improvement was seen in the town. People began leading Christian lives and gave up their former bad habits. What actually happened in that cathedral? It is a small cathedral uh, it was flocked by more than 12,000 people. How could 12,000 people fit in a cathedral that perhaps the largest can contain 800 to 1,000? And they were all outside. When the storm happened, when the earthquake happened, how did Dominic preach to all of them with 12,000 people? I don't know must be by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the same way that the apostles and Jesus Christ would preach to 5,000 people and more, and there's not even a microphone. There is no public address system, no PA system. And yet, how could everybody hear Jesus so clearly? So the Holy Spirit must be there. When St. Peter spoke to more than 3,000 people after the Pentecost, he did not use microphone. How could everybody hear him in his language and understood by all languages all over the world with the so-called glossolalia? Again, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's go back to what really happened in that cathedral when the storm broke and when there was powerful earthquake. Why is it that all the Albigensians converted and the whole uh, place, the whole city of Toulouse was finally reconverted to Catholicism after embracing Albin Gentianism, which uh, made Toulouse as the center of operation. So while uh, he was preaching in the cathedral, the rosary near Carcassonne, an Albingentian was brought to him who was possessed by the devil. Saint Dominic is exorcised him in the presence of a great crowd of people. It appears that over 12,000 had come to hear him preach. So such a holy person they are drawn and magnetized by the holiness. 
not because he's God. We are not worshiping Saint Dominic, but he is a disciple. As many people were attracted to the apostles because they have holiness, they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. So too with the saints, we venerate them. We ask them to intercede to the one mediator, Jesus Christ. As Saint Paul tells us in Timothy, there is only one mediator. So that is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. So Saint Dominic put the rosary around the Albingensian's neck and asked the devil to tell him who of all the saints in heaven was the one they feared most and should therefore be the most loved and revered by men. At this, they let out such unearthly screams that most of the people fell to the ground and fainted from fear. Then using all their cunning so as not to answer, the devils wept and wailed in such a pitiful way that many of the people also wept out of purely natural pity, the devils spoke to the mouth of the Albingentian, pleading in a heart-renting voice, Dominic, Dominic, have mercy on us. But instead of pitying the devil, you know, the devil does not need any pity because they're already damned. They are hopeless. And the devil will never change. He is unchangeable. And the devil never mean good for anything he says because he is the chief deceiver, the prince of all deceit. And so anything that is so palatable in the speech of the devil to tempt us, don't give in. So it was the same here. The devil was trying to entice the people to have pity on him. But he will not repent. He will continue with his desire, his firm desire to bring all souls, if he could, to hell. So he was asking pity to Saint Dominic. Saint Dominic was not one whit moved by the pathos of this wretched spirit. One Albingentian was possessed by 15,000 demons inside. How did it happen? Because this Albingentian started preaching against the Blessed Mother, started cursing the rosary, which was given by uh, the Blessed Mother to Saint Dominic. And when he did that, he was possessed by these 15,000 demons. So, later on, Saint Dominic invoked the Blessed Mother Oh, more power, most powerful and wonderful Virgin Mary, I implore you by the power of the Most Holy Rosary, order these enemies of the human race to answer me. So they did not want to answer the question of Dominic. Dominic, we beseech you by the passion of Jesus Christ, by the merits of the Holy Mother and all the saints, let us leave the body of this man without speaking further. Woe unto you, wretched spirit, who do not deserve to be heard, St. Dominic said. And kneeling down, he prayed to Our Lady. O most worthy mother of wisdom, I am praying for the people assembled here who had already learned how to say the angelic salutations properly. Please, I beg you, force your enemies to proclaim the whole truth and nothing but the truth about this here and now, before the multitude. Saint Dominic had hardly finished his prayer and the Blessed Mother appeared, surrounded by multitudes of angels. She struck the possessed man with a golden rod that she held and said, answer my servant Dominic at once. And the devils started screaming, oh you, who are our enemy, our downfall, and our destruction. Why have you come from heaven just to torture us so grievously? O oh, advocate of sinners, 
you who snatched them from the very jaws of hell, you who are the very sure path to heaven, must we, in spite of ourselves, tell the whole truth and confess before everyone who it is, who is the cause of our shame and our ruin? O oh, woe unto us, prince of, princess of darkness. And so they spoke, the devil spoke, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Blessed Mother. Because if you are an exorcist, if you command in the name of Jesus to the devil, he obeys. Remember Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Although he is God, Jesus did not deem equality with God, something to be grasped at. He emptied himself, he humbled himself, he obeyed unto death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him above every other name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, every head should bow, in heaven, on earth, and even in hell. So when you say in exorcism, in the name of Jesus, tell me the truth, because remember, the devil is a liar. If you don't say this command, the devil will tell a lie. But once you say in the name of Jesus, the devil is, is mandated to the command and he will tell the truth. And so they said, then listen then, you Christians, the mother of Jesus Christ is all powerful that she can save her servants from falling into hell. She is the sun which destroys the darkness of our wiles and subtlety. It is she who uncovers our hidden plots against sinners, against souls, breaks our, our snares, and makes our temptation useless and ineffectual. Meaning, if we pray the rosary, the snares of the devil will not work. Even their temptations will be useless. That's why it's a very good reminder for all of us. We are tempted with anger. We want to kill somebody. We want to hurt somebody. Pray the rosary. And that temptation to hurt someone will disappear. Many neighbors are warring against each other because they listen to the devil. The devil is diabolos. He is the one that divides. He's the one that puts everyone into chaos. He is the one that is causing all these civil wars, the civil unrest. He is the one causing all this uh, world war. He makes everyone go against each other because of the capital sins of anger. We want to vindicate ourselves. We don't have the humility to forgive and forget. As the Our Father tells us, I will only forgive you if you forgive your enemies. And yet these people who are causing all this division in the country, they go to confession, and yet they go to Mass, and they cannot forgive their enemies. Those confessions, the Mass, the communion, had very little effect on us, because it might just be a sacrilegious communion. And sacrilege, we know, is a mortal sin. So if we pray the rosary, this temptation disappears. Going back, we have to say, however, reluctantly, not a single soul who has really persevered in her service has ever been damned with us. It is the devil himself saying, if you have devotion to the Blessed Mother, you will never be damned. You'll never be lost. It's not me. It's not... Uh, it's not... Uh, not uh, Saint Dominic uh, de Guzman. It is not Saint Anselm who is saying this. It's not Saint Albert the Great. It is the devil, the arch enemy, telling the truth that anyone who is devoted to the Blessed Mother will never go to hell because they have never seen anyone go to hell who is a devotee of the Blessed Mother. Isn't it this beautiful? Huh? And. One single sigh that she offers to the Blessed Trinity is worth far more than all the prayers, desires, and aspiration of all the saints. It's coming from the devil, huh? 
we fear her more than put all the saints in heaven together. And we have no success with her faithful servants. So if you have devotion to the Blessed Mother, if the devils will tempt you, they will never succeed. Many Christians who call upon her when they are at the hour of death and who really ought to be damned according to our ordinary standards are saved by her intercession. <laughs> Take it from the devil, okay? And then the devils continued, Oh, if only that Mary had not pitted her strength against ours and have not upset our plans, we should have conquered the Catholic Church, our arts enemy, the only church founded by Jesus Christ. So take it from the devil, okay? And we should have seen to it that all the orders in the church fell into error and disorders. That means all the religious institutes should have fallen into errors. They will never succeed, the devil was saying, if you have devotion to the Blessed Mother. So the devil was compelled to tell the truth. Remember, he was an angel before, a good angel. He was created a good angel by God, but because of disobedience, he was damned to hell. And now he's trying to bring everyone to hell. And of course, if we believe in Jesus Christ, have faith in Him, and be baptized, and continue to believe in Him, and be faithful to all His teachings, we will never go to hell, because Jesus already paid for all our sins. But salvation is also subjective. We have to cooperate. And the Blessed Mother is the powerful ally of Jesus, because she is the mother. So now the devil continued. We are forced to speak. We must also tell you, nobody who perseveres in praying the rosary will ever be dumb. <laughs> Again, take it from the devil. Because she obtains for her servants the grace of true contrition of their sins. Remember the prostitute that I told you earlier in the former episode we had? She had true contrition to God through the Blessed Mother, while praying the Sorrowful Mystery. And by means of this, they obtain God's forgiveness and mercy. Again, take it from the devil. Then Saint Dominic had them all pray the rosary very slowly. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. This was repeated 150 times by all the 12,000 people in the cathedral. And what happened? When you do it slowly so that you understand what you're praying for, I understand what you're saying, then God will listen. And the Blessed Mother, who is the powerful intercessor, will bring our prayers to God and God will listen to our prayers. As they were praying the rosary, in every Hail Mary, so many demons are cast out from this Albin Gentian. When they finished the 150 Hail Marys, which was the scriptural rosary, all the demons were cast out from the heretic. And what happened? All the other Albin Gentian's heretics, they were converted because of these two great miracles. A large number of heretics were converted because of this miracle and joined eventually the association of the Dominicans, which is called Confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary. And their job is to pray the rosary for the conversion of sinners. So the Battle of Lepanto was a good proof of this because of the rosary, then it happened. And uh, if we consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Mother, the sign of consecration is when we have the scapular at the same time when we pray the rosary every day with the promise that we will pray the rosary until our death. If we do this, then nobody will be lost. Everybody will be saved. These words are not coming from St. Dominic. 
uh, it came from the Blessed Mother. And the Blessed Mother has no words of her own. She's very obedient to Jesus. She got the word from the Holy Trinity, from God himself. So it's God telling Mary and God telling us to Mary how important is the rosary. How do you apply this in your family? A lot of people, they come to me and say, Father, I cannot anymore handle my children. I cannot anymore uh, handle one of my, my child who was kind of infested, was possessed. You know, in my short, uh, uh, in my short priestly experience, I would always use the rosary to exercise the possess. I would first pray the rosary before I actually go to the person being exercised. And without much ado, the person who was possessed would always be cast out of the devil. Because as the devil said here, she's our number one enemy after Jesus Christ. And so uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 using the Dwey rhyme or the Vulgate, the original translation, she will crush the head of the serpent as the serpent lay in wait for her heel. So that means in front of the Blessed Mother, because she is full of grace, because the Lord is with her, she's like the tabernacle of God. The devil is helpless. She, he is powerless. If he is a preternatural person and has much more power than all of us in front of the Blessed Mother, he loses all his power because the Blessed Mother has God enthroned in her heart. She is the tabernacle, as Benedict XVI said, of the Trinity of Jesus Christ. So when any one of your child is uh, infested, pray the rosary. Uh, of course, she will find it, the possessed person will find to say the rosary, to join, to join you in praying the rosary. But continue and tell your possessed child to repeat the rosary uh, with you. And the devil will try at the beginning to say, no, don't say the rosary. Let your mother say it. But don't say it. But if you continue praying the rosary and even saying some ejaculatory prayer, O oh, Blessed Mother, cast out the devil from my son when you pray the Hail Mary, eventually the devil will disappear. It has always worked. As a priest, I have hundreds of cases who were infested or possessed. You know, with pornography, with the occult, how many of the teenagers got infested and eventually possessed? How do we know they are possessed? Because they went to the psychologists, they went to the psychiatrists, all their medicines did not work. It even got worse. And that means that the problem of this child is really spiritual. It is a diabolical possession. I was about to give a talk, and here comes a young priest carrying a possessed person around 10 years old. Father, can you, can you exercise this? I said, wait, wait, I'm going to give now the talk. People are waiting. Why don't you do it yourself? You're a priest. Pray the rosary. If you have two rosaries, so much the better. Put the other rosary in his neck and think of the other rosary and tell him to repeat the Hail Marys while praying the rosary. Of course, he will rebel, but eventually, she, as soon as he is able to say the rosary, then even the demon in him will be cast out. So I finished my talk after one hour, and the priest was waiting for me there with a 10-year-old boy, no longer having all those seizures and epilepsy. I said, Father, what did you do? I should said, I prayed the rosary. The boy was reacting. He was roaring like uh, a, a demon. 
And then what happened? I forced her to pray the rosary. In the name of Jesus, just pray the rosary. And as soon as uh, he was able to repeat the rosary, not even 10 Hail Mary's father, the demon in him was cast out. Now look completely smiling at you now, Father. And I blessed the child and said, good. It's not the first time I said I've seen hundreds of cases like that. So what is the conclusion? We have so much problem in the family. We have so much problem in our society. As the Blessed Trinity told St. Dominic, you want to solve the problem? Pray the rosary. Could you imagine if every family will pray the rosary? If every parish will pray the rosary, when there is a problem, political, social unrest, you know, violence, uh, looting, and then burning of stores to uh, express their anger and protest against the government and so on, against uh, racial discrimination and many other things. This can be solved. If we pray with devotion, the rosary, so many things can be settled because take it from the devil who was compelled to say it in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Blessed Mother. No one who would pray the rosary will be abandoned by her. On the contrary, she's able to destroy all our plots, to destroy societies, all our techniques to destroy the church, it is all cast out because we are all cast out because of the prayer of the Blessed Mother. And take it from the devil also. No one who was devoted to the Blessed Mother and prayed the rosary, we have never seen anyone dumb to hell because they pray the rosary and have devotion to her. So in these difficult moments, in these uncertain times, when we don't know what to do in our life, and there's so much, you know, uh, uh, hopelessness and there's so much despair let us go to the Blessed Mother she's the most powerful intercessor for all of us to Jesus the one mediator and she will protect us and she will help us and Jesus of course as Saint Bridget of Sweden said why do you always listen to the Blessed Mother I always listen to the Blessed Mother because when I was still on earth, she obeyed all my commands. Now that she is in heaven, I obey all her intercessions, all her requests. And so that's the reason why through the Blessed Mother, we can get so many graces from God. So don't forget, pray your rosary every day. Don't forget when any one of your children is infested or having some stubborn or hard-headedness, heartlessness, pray the rosary and eventually invite him also or her to pray with you the rosary. And surely the demon who is always there like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour will be cast out. And now uh, invite also your friends to pray the rosary, promote the rosary as many people pray the rosary, so much the better. If the whole diocese is praying the rosary, from the bishop down to the priest and all the lay people, the diocese would be so peaceful. And no problem will ever destroy these people. And they can go on with their jobs, with their duties peacefully, and they can work and so on. And so it becomes a good environment for people to grow as a civilization of love and people who love one another and help one another. So don't forget, pray the rosary every day, have devotion to the Blessed Mother. God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.